For this regression problem, we have evaporation data from three different sites, and we want to predict evaporation using six different variables, the maximum temperature, the minimum temperature, the maximum and minimum humidities, the wind speeds, and the sunshine. Now, a first approach, or a simple approach, would be to use the data from a single site to predict the evaporation on the others. But since some of the variables have different scales from site to site, the resulting models do not generalize very well. A better approach is to, to create a single data set with the data from the three sites as we did here. Here on the right we have a scatter plot which will help us to, to determine the variable importance of each variable against the targets. And at this moment it is showing the variable importance of the maximum temperature which is uh, which gives a, an R square of 0.56. If we move on to the next variable, the minimum temperature, it has a slightly better R square of 0.58. But when we move on to one of the humidities, we see that the R square tumbles down to 0.01. We can see here the, all the R squares here on the right, and it is clear that the, 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 the temperatures are the most important variables in this data set. Also for reference, I've added here a multilinear regression model. This multilinear regression model has an R square of 0.7 and it was created using the line nest function from Excel. Here on the left we have a line chart and this line chart for, is showing the maximum temperature data. And it shows clearly that the different that the data from different sites have different scales. You can see the first site, the second site and the third site. Now this is the reason why we created a single data set from all the sites and it's also why we also we need to do a random sampling for to create the training set and the testing sets. That's what we did and we have we used two thirds of that random sampling for the training data as you can see here and the last third for the testing set. Now that we've seen the data let's have a look at GeneXplot tools and create a new run. This call this let's call this uh, run evaporation and this is a function finding or regression problem we and we are going to get the data from Excel we need to select the file the Excel file and GeneXpo tools knows to select the worksheet with the, which is called training so all you need to do is press load and now we need to repeat the same process for testing for the test sets. Press load and finish and save the run file. Let's have a quick look at the data we just loaded. Here it is, the training set with 264 uh, samples and also the testing set with 132. And we can start the run straight away using the default settings. GeneXplot 2 doesn't take a long time to create good values, uh, good models, but the um, but it's more time than this video permits, so we created a different run uh, which I'm going to load, load now. This run has um, several models, as you can see here in the history, and the best one is here at the bottom. And it has a 0.82 R square in the training sets, which is uh, much higher than the multilinear regression model, and it also shows that it generalizes well because it has a uh, 0.82 uh, R square for the testing sets. Let's have a quick look at the model itself. And we can see here the model in MATLAB. And now we want to write a mathematical expression. The best way to do this, instead of using the code from MATLAB, is to use the expression tree. And I'm going to get a little bit more space here on the screen. Now the way this works is we read the tree from left to right and and from the bottom and from the bottom up. So we start with this multiplication and we have C7 multiplied by D0, which is the maximum temperature, and then we have the subtraction, so it's minus C6, which is another constant, and every all these are inside the square root. Now we have a multiplication and we have this block here which is a division of D1, the minimum temperature, 
divided by d5 plus d3. All this is inside the square root. This, this tree is ready. All we need to do is to... We would need to repeat the same process for the remaining trees and then we would add each one of them. The next step is to score data and to determine the variable importance against this model. We could do the scoring of the data in GeneX Pro Tools, but this time I'm going to do it in Excel through the uh, Deploy to, e to Excel uh, feature. So we just choose Deployment, Deploy Model to Excel. We can accept the, the defaults. And what's going to happen now is GeneX Pro Tools is creating an Excel file which contains the training data, the testing data, and the model itself. So let's look here. First we have a summary spreadsheet. Then here we have the training data plus the, mod the model. Then we have uh, testing data and also the model. And finally we have a scoring example. Now as you can see here, the scoring, the, the model is being calculated inside Excel. And the way this works is through VBA code. So if you go into the developer tab and select view code, and we look here in model, we'll see the exact same code as before. Uh, that, in MATLAB, that was in MATLAB, in GeneXpo Tools. Here we can see it in VBA for Excel. So to, to score some more data, we just need to grab the data. And I'm going to get the data from these other spreadsheets. Select it and copy it. And finally, paste it on these sides. And there we go. So we just need to expand this, this calculation. And we have here um, the evaporation or prediction of the evaporation for a fourth site, for example. Finally, let's have a look into determining the variable importance against the model. To do that, we need a um, scatter plot. So let's, ins let's select some data first and then insert the scatter plot. Let's just do a little bit of cleanup first here. Add the trend line and just move this box over over here. Okay, this is showing the R square for the for the model against the targets, and but we are interested on on the R squares of the variables against the model. So let's grab this and move it to the maximum temperature. There we go. In this case, the maximum temperature has an R square of 0.76. The minimum temperature has an R square of 0.77. And as before, as we move on, the R square uh, for this variable, for example, is much lower. This concludes this video. I hope you found it useful and thank you for watching.